appreciate everybody being here. And again, to, to God be the glory. Um, uh, 2016 recruiting class, uh, obviously a great day for us. Uh, got a lot of talented young men that uh, we believe that can continue to be a champions for Christ, both on and off the football field. Uh, we ended up here having really 17 here recruits uh, that um, have done a great job here for our coaches. Our coaches have done a great job for these uh, student athletes. Uh, I think the one thing that comes together here on this whole group uh, that I talk with high school coaches and I talk with uh, administrators, uh, tremendously competitive uh, is kind of the thing that comes to my mind. Again, both on the field and both off the football field. You say, well, what do you mean by competitive? Uh, again, they want to compete. They want to be the best that they can be in the classroom. They want to talk about trying to get the extra things going on to, to get that aid. Uh, they also, on the football field, they want to talk about want to going against the best in the uh, city, the best on their team, uh, the best around the country. Uh, they, go, they, get, uh, they come in in the morning at 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Those are kind of comments that we heard about some of these guys on this uh, recruiting uh, uh, class in 2016. Very athletic. Uh, we always talk about being <clears throat> being athletic, and I think this group of guys here are really, really tremendously athletic. When I say athletic, you know, what, what, what does that mean? I know as people may look at this, and we're talking about guys that can run, they can jump, they can do it all at a high level of speed, and that's what we mean by uh, athleticism. Uh, as you're going to see there, we're going to have uh, two JC guys. we got one that's already here, uh, going to probably end up playing that spur position there, Solomon McGinty. Uh, we have another a junior college kid by the name of Julio uh, Lozano, going to be an offensive lineman for us. Uh, he's not here at this point in time. He'll be here in the uh, fall. We'll have three years to play three uh, as a tackle. So we did have two mid-year guys that are here, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Solomon McGinty uh, and also uh, Rudiger. Uh, Yerrick is our quarterback that's in right now. So uh, we're happy to have both of those guys in. I think they're going to have a tremendous impact on our football team. I think they can even have it even this year. Uh, the interesting thing is we ended up having 10 different states uh, that we actually are getting players uh, from this year's class. And uh, so we got a, quite a few of them where we had only got one guy in this state. And we went to Nebraska, went to Minnesota uh, and, and Alabama, so on and so forth across this country and people that uh, thought that liberty was a fit. So that was the reason why we had to go all across the country and find the right people. The other good thing I want to mention here is uh, we did a great job of handling as far as this class and the people that came here. Uh, what I mean by that is it's almost like that in the last two years we've been about just about 90% uh, as far as getting it. Like, for example, we had 18 out of 20 people that came and um, 18 of them committed. So like 20 people come here on a visit. 18 of them here committed. And you're talking about spending your money wisely. You're talking about not necessarily running around all crazy. That means that our staff did a great job of trying to find the right people that had a sincere interest in us and then also really would be a great fit for us football-wise, school-wise, everything. And so when we had people here, and again, uh, a lot of those times that came, the people came with their parents and both parents uh, as far as that goes. Uh, just a real quick here as far as the um, uh, states-wise, I just want to point out we had one guy from Virginia. Last year we had four people from Virginia. Again, you, you never know how it's going to work out. We're definitely going to uh, continue to recruit hard in the state of Virginia. Uh, we continue to do that. Uh, so the last two years we've had five uh, people here in the state of Virginia. Uh, this year we had four in Florida. Texas had three. Georgia has three. Uh, and then we kind of went all over the place as far as the other uh, states. I'm going to go real quick by each guy and kind of uh, just say a few attributes about him. First of all, special teams uh, kicker, Alex Probert. Uh, I think he's a fantastic kicker, very, very consistent, very, very uh, uh, strong leg, great uh, trajectory on his kicks, meaning that the kick gets up very, very high very quickly. The other thing about it that's very interesting is he uh, has a, a long jump, 23 feet, so he is a good athlete uh, as far as that goes. His father... Uh, came here to Liberty, went to Liberty here, and so that was a great fit for him. He was here in our summer camp. Real quick about Rudiger Yerick, as I mentioned about him being here uh, as already at this time, uh, right here from the Charlotte, North Carolina area. He went to a Metro Carolina uh, Christian Academy, a uh, guy about six foot three, six four, dual threat guy, had 1,000 yards rushing, had about 1,600 yards passing, had about 19 touchdowns there of passing, and had about eight or nine there as far as uh, rushing. So he is a tremendous athlete. Other quarterback that we did choose this year here, nice Stephen Calvert, uh, goes by the nickname Buckshot. 
uh, out of Carroll City High School in Miami, uh, out of Dade County. He was first team all Dade County quarterback there in that area. As we all know, tremendous talent right there in the Dade County area. Uh, and he was one of the best ones around. Uh, he, I think he has the strongest arm and one of the most accurate uh, quarterbacks there, particularly here in around the country, because I've, I've seen him in a camp. He came to our camp, and uh, this guy can spin it. Uh, he can throw the ball well. He's more of a traditional drop back guy. Uh, I wouldn't say he's a dual threat guy as far as that goes in comparison of the of the two young men. Uh, running back Mitchell Lewis uh, from Auburn, Alabama, went to Lee Scott Academy. Uh, very physical runner, good quickness. Uh, he once he sees a hole. He gets vertical quick, and I really like that about him. Uh, he had over, I think, um, just about 1,600 yards rushing, or 1,900 yards rushing, had 21 touchdowns. And so he had a great uh, career there as a young man there at his high school. Now the big boys. Very excited about these uh, four or five linemen we have. I mentioned earlier about uh, Julio Lozano, going to be an offensive tackle, guy that played at Kilgore Junior College. Uh, but he's also from the Houston area as far as high school, went to Bel Air High School there in the Houston area. So he played defensive line in high school, a little bit offensive line. Uh, they started him out a little bit defense as far as at Kilgore. Then they moved him to an offensive tackle. And uh, I think his best ball is ahead of him here. He's only played one year uh, as an offensive lineman. And uh, he's uh, six foot four, six five, probably about 295, 300 pounds right now. And uh, can really do a lot of good things as far as, as we go there. Ethan Crawford from Aquinas High School in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, he's a big guy. He's a guy that's six foot five. He's about 315. Uh, really strong, thick player. Uh, very tenacious, uh, aggressive, uh, and does a lot of great things for that. Been an all conference and all region player, both as a junior and a senior. Damian Bounds, offensive lineman there from Stockbridge, Georgia, Stockbridge High School. Uh, he's very athletic, very quick. Uh, probably going to be really more of a center, center guard guy for us. Very tenacious. Um, uh, you, you, you may, you, uh, Lou, uh, I'm going to say, use the term as a guy that got a little bit of nastiness about him because he gets after it. He finishes blocks, uh, does a lot of great things on, on down the field at the second and third level, blocking linebackers, blocking safety, blocking corners. You watch the tape, you see him all the way down the field, and he continue to hustle, continue to block, and, and do a lot of great things as far as that perspective. Uh, he played in the um, Florida-Georgia All-Star game there. Daniel Zapata, uh, Paramus Catholic High School there in Paramus, uh, New Jersey. Uh, very strong finisher, another guy that's aggressive, gets after it, played center, guard, tackle. Uh, we're probably going to look at him at the guard center area there uh, as far as he goes uh, at his talent. Aiden Burroughs, another offensive lineman from Norfolk, Nebraska. Um, uh, a guy, big, big guy, raw guy. Um, Really what I liked about him is he's a guy that's really tenacious about getting after it. He works out every day at 5.30 in the morning, just gets after it. Uh, I think his tremendous ball is ahead of him. Uh, I think he's going to continue to get bigger. He's done track, discus, and shot, and those kind of things of that nature. A two-time all-district player in his area. Uh, Julio Lozano, as I mentioned, um, uh, very, very talented guy. Uh, wide receivers, let's go to those two guys that we have here are coming to us. Uh, Antonio Gandy-Golden. Six foot four, 200 pounds, uh, from Paul Dean County High School there in the Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia area. Uh, he was named Offensive Player of the Year as a sophomore, as a junior, as a senior. Uh, he's completed his career at the high school, and he, um, I think he holds six school records uh, as far as as a wide receiver. Uh, he finished in the Max Preps National High School All-Star Game with 230 receiving yards. So a very, very talented guy. Uh, as I mentioned, there, six foot four. He definitely has the size and the speed to be able to do the things we want him to do. The other receiver is Lionel McConnell uh, out of Allen, Texas, Allen High School. Uh, that's a high school there that they got a lot of great talent out of that whole high school there, and they've done very, very well. He actually just played one year at Allen. He's originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, played quarterback, played receiver at his old high school there in Cincinnati. He moved to Allen, Texas here his senior year. And he played receiver, punt returner, kickoff returner, and, and has done a lot of great things there for them. He has a cousin named, by the name of John Connor, who was a running back there in the NFL. There played for the Jets, the Bengals, and the Giants. So he has some bloodlines there uh, as far as that goes. Defensively, uh, DeCarlo Hamilton, nose guard, what he's going to play. He's six foot two, six three, all of 300 pounds uh, from American Heritage High School in Plantation, Florida. A mixture of a Jerron Green and a Brian Luella. If uh, those people here to know about those two guys, hardworking, blue-collar guy, gets off blocks, and, and very athletic and being able to make plays. 
Um, defensive end, next, a guy by the name of Michael Anderson. Uh, very interesting guy here. Uh, he he kind of played a lot of different positions. He played a former quarterback. He's played receiver. He played a little defensive end. He's played defensive tackle. Uh, you know, he's still a growing young man. You know, he's 6'2", 6'3", right now, probably 210 pounds. Uh, and I, I really, really impressed by him. He can use his hands well. He uses his hands in extension, throws people off blocks, and hadn't really played a whole lot of that football as far as being on the, on the defensive line there uh, this past year. So had a tremendous IQ. Um, you may say a little bit of a, a mixture of Chima and a little bit of Jawan Wales as far as some of the things that he can do. Uh, so he got a tremendous upside, and we're blessed to, to have him. Correll Evans uh, from Hollandale High School in Hollandale, Florida. Uh, he's played in multiple positions, too. He's been a receiver. He's been a tight end. He's been a running back, been a defensive end, a safety, and, and all different plays of, of that area. Um, he has great hands. You saw them as a receiver. They put him out sometimes and see him catching the ball and doing all that. Has good movement as a receiver. Uh, and obviously, he's very, very, very powerful as far as being able to strike people from the defensive side, but we're going to end up uh, playing him there as a, as a linebacker. Great passion for the game. You can see that uh, as the way he goes about doing his business. A tremendous student and uh, a high-character individual. Uh, going to the safeties, Brandon Tillman uh, from River Bluff High School there in Lexington, South Carolina. Uh, he is a three-sport athlete, uh, football, baseball, basketball, outstanding in all three. Uh, he's going to play both sports here if everything continues to work out well of football and baseball. Uh, and I, I just really impressed by like, a very tough guy, played quarterback on his team, and he also played safety linebacker on his team and very physical, can run well, uh, and just so talented and athletic and, and has a lot of tremendous skills and uh, uh, been able to be a football player, basketball player, baseball player, team captain there just about in all the sports. And uh, so he is a very dynamic uh, athlete. Another guy here, a safety, a Seneca Espinoza Jr., uh, just up the road here in Virginia there, Washington Lee High School there in Arlington, Virginia. A physical athlete uh, that can play a lot of different positions. He played defense, played the safety, the corner, the linebacker. Uh, has also uh, uh, done some great things there on the offensive side, but mainly a defensive guy. We're going to play him at the safety spot and let him uh, roam around and make plays, uh, good hands, uh, and, and knows how to strike people in uh, that aspect. Then I didn't really talk about Solomon McGinty, a little bit more details about him. Uh, from Tyler Junior College, uh, went to Navasota High School there in, uh, just outside of uh, Houston. Uh, matter of fact, Navasota, Texas um, uh, is where my mom grew up, and uh, we actually kind of come together and talking about it with his mom. We're, we're probably related because we talked about some certain relatives and last names and different things of that nature that there's probably a relationship there uh, with his mom and, and uh, his family there. But um, very physical athlete. He played receiver. He's played uh, defensive back. We're going to play him as a safety to a spur position. We'll figure that all out as we go along uh, in, uh, in the um, aspect of these athletes. But that's a quick glimpse of uh, the guys that we have on our football team here in this class. And Again, I think the biggest thing, go back, like I've said originally there, I think they're tremendously competitive. They're very athletic, and I think it's going to fit with the mesh that we're uh, trying to need in our football team. There are certain areas we needed players. You can see we end up taking about three safeties. We end up taking here four or five offensive linemen. Uh, so it kind of hits a need. We took two quarterbacks. Uh, so I think that spoke about some of the things that we felt that we need to get, and we did fit those areas. Uh, sometimes you try to get them, and you don't get all those areas that you're trying to get in a class. Uh, but we're fortunate and blessed that we got all the areas that we needed. We got the talent that we needed. Now we just go get them here and see what they can do. Open up to the questions. Coach, with the five offensive linemen, you need to replace two seniors, and you have a lot of youth there. What did you see in wanting to bring in you know, the number of offensive linemen you brought in to just add depth in case you have another year like you had with injuries? Well, I think depth is, is, is one thing, and, and then trying to make sure that we can continue to have linemen be ready to play. Because it usually take, you know, a year to two years, and uh, you want to make sure that you have a, enough uh, people in there to, to do what they need to do. So I think it was very important for us to make sure that we have enough offensive linemen to make things happen in the right way. A lot of guys that played different positions in high school, and just kind of elaborate on how you determine 
you know, where these guys will best fit at the collegiate level? Well, I, I think, like I said, I use that word athletic a lot. And uh, I tell our coaches uh, we want people who are athletic at every single position. Uh, it doesn't matter, meaning that we want to see them be able to move, run well, uh, in open field. Uh, and then we can figure out where they can fit at certain positions. It's the same thing at offensive linemen. Even they may they may weigh 290 pounds, we want to see can they be able to run, get up off their feet, and still be able to make something happen and run with an explosion in, in those positions. Uh, that's like I said, I mentioned a lot of guys. And again, the thing is impressive about the, um, Julio. I mentioned about him played defensive line and and being able to do the things that he can do. He's athletic. He could probably play defensive line. He could play offensive line. Uh, but our need right now is a little bit more to trying to find an offensive tackle. And so we need to start him out there. So uh, a lot of people that can play a lot of positions, they're going to be able to be more successful. That's just in the history as I've been as a head football coach and been an assistant coach and, and been as a player. Uh, I think it also helps when people play different positions. They understand how to play their position or whatever position they play because they understand what the other person is trying to do, whether it's an offensive lineman, defensive lineman, that they're going up against them. And so that's advantageous uh, for us and for them. You change offensive coordinators after the season, yet both quarterbacks remain committed. Did that have any? Did were both quarterbacks still very comfortable with coming here, even with the change in offensive coordinator, play caller, and with Joe remaining as the quarterbacks coach? Did that give them a familiarity that they can still, you know, have him there coaching him and also being in a play caller as well? Well, I think the uh, relationship that had already been built was a plus. Um, so I think that was a great thing as far as that goes. They all felt very, very comfortable. Um, 24 hours after I would made the decision, I, I called everybody, not just the quarterback, but I called every recruit and told them the situation and, and uh, to see if they had any questions. Very few had a whole lot of questions to ask. And then I ended up going to their homes and uh, facing them face to face to see if they still had some questions. Obviously, it only affected the offensive side of the ball, per se. Uh, but everybody was excited about it and thrilled and, and, and looking forward to it. And so nobody did, did waver at all as far as uh, that part of it. Uh, Coach, you mentioned 17 signees. Do you expect to have any more come in? There possibly could be one more or two. You know, uh, we'll see how things go. We always have some things going on in recruiting. And, and uh, if you get the right person, then you'll take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, also, with the two quarterbacks, um, do you anticipate them both to compete for the starting job with Masha this year? Um, and then once you make your decision, obviously that's getting into spring and fall, uh, do you anticipate either one maybe redshirting next year? Well, I think we're going to have an opportunity to compete. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, we always tell everybody when they come here um, that they're going to compete for an opportunity. I'm not afraid to play freshmen. If they're uh, suited and ready to play and make plays for us, uh, then we'll do that. Uh, so everybody got an opportunity to compete, and uh, we look forward to those guys competing. And our quarterbacks are very, very talented. Uh, you know, Stefan Mosh is going to get the, the little bit of edge at the beginning. I'm, you know, can say that for sure. Uh, but he got to stay uh, on top of his game, and uh, it's, it's good to have competition. I can tell you that for sure. So everyone wants to know with the, you know with the list and all the potential, like what guys could be out there on the field right away. Oh, you know, I, I'm gonna probably go more uh, position of what we're kind of looking at. Um, I, I think the um, safety position to be an opportunity for some people, maybe a little more than others. They're gonna be all positions. Uh, you know, that might be the one position per se. Um, uh, I can say D line. We're going, you know, we've been known already. We'll always usually play one freshman or two at the D line position. So I can say that might be one to two people that will play as a defensive line on the offensive side of the ball. Again, I think offensive line will be a little bit tough, uh, but I anticipate there might be one or two that uh, won't redshirt. They may not be a starter, they may end up playing some. Um, and, and of course, like I said, we're competing for the, the quarterback job, and we'll see what happens. With Tillman specifically, um, I mean, I know you were a two-sport guy, same two sports, you know, football and baseball. What challenges do you foresee for him, and you know, how how is that dynamic going to play out? Well, I, I think number one is uh, making sure that he's on track here for football uh, in the fall semester, see how he handles that. I think academics is going to be a another piece of the puzzle to see how well can he handle that uh, and see can he handle the things as far as the um, adjustment here in college. I mean, uh, nobody knows that until you get here at any school. Uh, so that's why I say we're planning on to, 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 do, uh, to do that if he fits it. And uh, we'll see what happens. But I think he's a very talented young man. 
Uh, I think he has a good uh, head on his shoulders. He understands the commitment. Uh, he's done it all his life. I understand how that works. Uh, I've experienced it. Uh, and so we'll have a lot of dialogue between the two of us uh, and then also uh, be a, uh, some dialogue with that with Coach Tolman. Only one running back in this recruiting class. Uh, is that a position that you're hoping that the the freshman who redshirted this past year will be able to use that year of experience to step up behind uh, Todd and hopefully you can bring Mitchell along at a pace that suits him? Well, you know, I think a running back is usually a position where if you play a true freshman day, they were able to handle it. Uh, you know, we got uh, two people here hadn't played a whole lot. We're at three, three people as far as at the running back spot. And you're looking at, um, and we, I don't know if I can't remember if I made an announcement or not, but Denver Daniels is going to move to running back. And we got uh, Frank Hickson, uh, we got Carrington Mosley, and got Todd Macon. So we got those four people. Uh, and really, Todd Megan's the only one that's really had a whole lot of playing time. So we feel good about where we're at. Uh, if Mitchell comes in and uh, he's a guy that shows some, some great skills and some talent, then uh, so be it. He'll, he'll compete for the job. Finally, but the last, but there still could be another one, but I know right now we got a defensive back by the name of Jimmy Fox, a cornerback there from uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, Lakewood High School, a guy about six foot one. He's probably about 180 pounds. He was in our 707 camp. Uh, Florida brought in an all-star team, per se, and he came in and, and showed a lot of good skills. He really was a receiver, DB, a corner, safety. We're going to start him out as a corner, but I think the great thing about him, he's probably maybe similar to a um, Chris Turner, uh, body size-wise, six foot, six foot one, uh, great ball skills, uh, and very, very tough young man. So uh, again, we are Add that addition, so we're 18 there um, uh, as far as at this point in time. But there, there still could be one or two out there as we move along.